everyone welcome back to the homestead today's video is going to be a q a video so thank you so much to all of those who submitted questions on the community page there were a lot <laughs> so we're not going to be able to get to all your questions today but we're going to do as many as we can and then we'll probably do videos like this periodically so if you don't get your question answered today you can submit it again in the future for another q a video yeah and we might do a q a live stream yeah do like a live stream like you did before but have questions prepared beforehand from you all yeah all right so here we go so get right into this <laughs> question number one is from mama to malachi okay. and she says she would love to hear how our sabbath preparation is different like the special things that we need to do to prepare for um taking care of animals, the garden, the house, etc. to abstain from working on the Sabbath? Good question. Yeah, and honestly, that's something that we're still figuring out. We've been keeping the Sabbath for, what, seven years now? Seven about or eight, that. About mm -hmm. seven or eight years now. And we just keep on trying to find ways to make it easier to rest. So um, just typical things would be making sure all the animals have plenty of water the day before, some of the animals can be fed double and some can't. So if we can feed double, we do that. Uh, all the nesting boxes are cleaned out the day before. Uh, of course, I do as much meal prep as I can on that day. We mm -hmm. do house cleaning on that day, the day before. Um, but I've also found that it helps to do some things actually on Thursday. So Friday we call Arab Shabbat. Thursday is our air of Arab Shabbat. <laughs> and so if we can get a few things done actually on Thursday then that makes Friday not so crazy and it makes it easier to then rest on on the Sabbath yeah what do you do about food uh, I pretty much always make the same dinner every Friday night is taco salad and I make double of everything so then we have um, leftovers on Shabbat of the taco salad I also make double breakfast um, which is usually chocolate chip pancakes so it's kind of a treat and we have that for breakfast left over and then the other meal on Sabbath is kind of just a snacky meal. Free for all. Free for all. A lot of times people aren't even hungry. That's usually the lunchtime meal because um, pe some people kind of sleep in and have breakfast later. So then when lunch rolls around, it's not, not everyone's hungry. Um, so we just usually have a snacky lunch for whoever's hungry. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So this next question here is from Shannon Hazleton. She wants to know how the boys' homesteads are coming along. Right. Well, um, summertime is not a great time to do much for homesteading when you're starting with raw land, which they're doing. So um, now that the ticks and chiggers have gone dormant, <laughs> they're going to be able to get back onto their areas and um, just do some more tree clearing. Uh, then the next thing is going to be dirt work. Yeah. So we'll have to rent a machine um, and then they'll be ready probably for some cement work. So mostly it's just been planning at this point, but uh, with the weather change, they'll be able to get actually doing more here soon. <laughs> yep. She also asked what we are all reading lately. What we're reading. Yeah. Okay. What do we got going on? Of course, scripture. That's first and foremost for all of us. We read, we read our Bibles. Yeah. And Caleb and Josh in particular are really enjoying getting into the Word. So they mostly are just reading the Bible. Uh, Nate and Esther were given a series from a friend to, that, that they're borrowing here by Chuck Black, Kingdom's Quest. So they're working their way through that series. Esther's also in two other series, Laura Ingalls Wilder Little House Books, and then also she's doing some American Girl series books as well. What? Last question from Shannon. Here. Yeah, last question from Shannon. What we're looking forward to in the coming months? Oh. Yeah, what are we looking forward to in the coming months? Cold. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to cold. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but hopefully snow. Yeah, snow is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Spring is probably our favorite time of year. Yeah. So Carrie, the consummate gardener here, is always looking forward to spring, right when spring's over. Yes. <laughs> In fact, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I just planted a bunch of spring bulbs that I was given for my birthday and that was making me think all the more of spring. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would say we're probably all looking forward to our friends, the Burtons, being here. 
they got to come and visit for my birthday, which was a total surprise to me. Um, thank you, love. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> and we just had an awesome day with them. So we're looking forward to when they're actually on their property, um, just living right next door and getting to connect with them on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And then there's things that, you know, look forward to. Though it's a lot of work, the fire's going, you know, keeping the fire's going in the, in the cabin. Um, there's some kind of nostalgia about that, you know, having a fire going in the wood stove and mm -hmm. that kind of heat and the ambiance it creates and everything. It's, I like it for sure. Yeah, I love cooking on the cook stove. It's so much easier than going in and out, outside kitchen. <laughs> and then just having that constant warm there, warmth there of the wood stove going. Yeah. It's very comforting. It's a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next question is from Amy M. And she asks, what are the three things we would do different when we were building our homestead? Very good question. Right. First and foremost, I would say we would do a lot of things differently regarding animals. Yes. Probably, you know. Really what you have to do with animals is you have to um, build and create and develop your infrastructure. So basically, all the housing for the animals, quote unquote housing, uh, fencing, your watering, your feeding, all these things, um, your coops, your nesting boxes, all the things for animals, all the infrastructure needs to be built and put in properly first and then bring the animals in. So uh, that was a mistake we made mainly out of ignorance. Right, we didn't have experience with animals, so we often would trust other people's experience and do what other people were recommending doing. So you have to be careful who you talk to. Definitely go and uh, meet with people who have animals, get ideas from them, but your situation is going to be totally unique to you. And so just do the best you can. So a quick for instance, you know, you might say, okay, we're going to start with one flock of chickens. And you do, but then you let your chickens set on their own nests, right? You let them go broody, they raise up their own chicks. Then all of a sudden, the next year, you don't have a second coop, you don't have a second chicken yard, you don't have anything ready. All of a sudden, next year, you have a whole nother flock that you've just raised. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what kept happening to us. So then it's just like, okay, well, what do we do with this whole nother flock? Well, let's throw up a fence, make a square, and <laughs> chuck them in there. <laughs> Not exactly, but... <laughs> Yeah, when you're building your initial infrastructure, you have to account for the multiplication of those animals because they often do really well at that. <laughs> you have to consider calving if, you, if you're going to have a calf and where you're going to separate that calf for milking. Uh, there's just so many things. Often little baby, baby animals like ducklings actually need a whole different set, setup in order to survive. They can't yeah. necessarily stay with the bigger group. So... There's so many variables with animals and you can't plan for them all, but if you can mm -hmm. plan for as many as possible, um, that will help. <laughs> yeah. So we would have started with less animals. We would have increased our animal numbers more slowly than what we did do. Mm -hmm. um, and we would have focused on the infrastructure, the fencing, watering systems, all this kind of stuff. So that's for sure something we would have done. Another thing we would have done differently, so this would be number two, is that we would have focused more so on establishing our gardens and orchards over animals. animals. Yeah. Um, because honestly, animals just take a lot of time and resources, just a huge amount yeah. of time and a large amount of resources. Yeah. So really, we would have, we would have focused on establishing our gardens and... Um, orchards and things like that and then slowly done the animals yeah uh, and then the third thing has to do with water catchment we have rainwater catchment as our main source of water for our cabin and we put an uninsulated tank outside and the plumbing right through the outside to get in <laughs> and so uh, we've had lots of work to try and fix that problem so if you're gonna do rainwater catchment in a cold climate like Missouri then um, definitely put the tank and the plumbing all in, in an inside heated location and that's just a huge expense that we did not have initially um, nor did we have the experience 
Yeah, we would have done that differently if we could have. <laughs> okay, so Sunshine Acres had some questions. And first one is, uh, what is your preferred laundry soap and shampoo? Sorry about the wind here, guys. <laughs> uh, for laundry soap, I've used Charlie's soap for years now. Um, I've tried all different things from soap nuts to making my own uh, to other natural types. And I just really like Charlie's soap. It does well for our family, uh, especially for those with sensitive skin. So uh, shampoo, I just get organic baby shampoo wash, usually off of Vitacost, um, unscented. Uh, just different varieties, whatever's cheaper. <laughs> uh, what was that one? The other one is about the stainless steel dishes that we have. The dishes, right. bowls, all these kind of things. Where are we getting all that stainless steel good stuff? Yeah, mostly off of Amazon. There was a place um, when we lived in Alaska that I used. I don't know if they sell anymore. Uh, so mostly it's just Amazon at this point. And we just get a little at a time because they can be expensive. Okay, so Jordan G's asked, do your kids have friends who come over and hang out and stuff like that? Or do you just keep to the family? We do mostly <clears throat> just keep to the family. But our children definitely do have friends that come over and hang out once in a while. Or we go over there. Mm -hmm. And all that kind of good stuff. Yep. Okay, so this next question is from Nicole M. And really good question here. Especially for mamas. <laughs> and for anybody looking to go towards natural health and healing remedies. Right. So her question is, do you have any books uh, recommending <laughs> how to use essential oils, natural remedies, traditional remedies, try to get away from the pharmaceutical stuff, um, and all that? What kind of all right so i have to say there are so so many good resources out there but some of my go-to ones are essential oils ancient medicine by josh axe and jordan rubin love this one um for herbs the how to herb book is a great one it's also got a lot of information on nutrition uh, my absolute first and probably favorite is one that Kip got me before we even knew we were into this stuff so years ago um, <laughs> the herb bible uh, it's a complete guide to growing and using Jeez. herbs I come back to this one a lot um, just for like homesteading self-sufficiency life this is a really fun one John Seymour hopefully you can all read that um, and then one for nutrition is n called Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. That's a really good one to just get back to traditional cooking methods. I didn't bring that one out. It's a very thick, big book. <laughs> so that's a good starting place. Very good. Okay, so this next question is from Sarah Babson. And she's asking about babies. <laughs> and how to get them little lovely critters asleep and keep them asleep. <laughs> All right, particularly um, she's got one that's nursing through the night, often multiple times and often awake for hours upon time. Okay, that's a tough one. Every little one is different. Uh, I've been blessed by our last one who sleeps almost through the night. She still nurses, but I'm able to sleep in between the nursing. So maybe perhaps you could do something for yourself to help help get better sleep in between when the baby's waking to nurse. Magnesium can help with that if you've got low magnesium levels. And just give it time. It could just be that the little one's doing some teething or something's happening like that that's keeping the little one awake more. So be patient. Hopefully it will get better. Uh, if it's teething, I've used Highland's teething tablets um, or even the colic tablets. Sometimes I think the colic tablets worked better to help with sleep and then just making sure that your little one has plenty of food before bedtime if, if he or she is eating solid foods yet help fill that belly up before bedtime so then hopefully the sleep will last longer through the night um, but yeah just try and enjoy your little one because it's this uh, hard time of losing sleep is not going to last forever it will pass and uh, yeah hopefully that's helpful in some way <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your questions. I'm sorry that we can't get to all of them. 
yeah, for sure. We're gonna have to stop here. <laughs> next time we'll maybe jump around <clears throat> and not go in order from top down. Maybe we'll jump around next time so that if you uh, put in a later question, <laughs> maybe we'll get to it. Yeah. Hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you as always to our patrons who make these videos possible. You guys are awesome. If you have not subscribed and you enjoy our videos, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, we pray blessings over, over you and yours. And, and whatever, whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. heart.